Hi, my name's Jenna Hawk, and for the last 10 weeks, I've been thinking about trees. I was walking around East Palo Alto back in September. EPA is a low-income neighborhood predominantly inhabited by minority communities. Walking along a street off of University Avenue, I noticed it looked completely different from the nearby rich neighborhoods surrounding Stanford's campus, Palo Alto. To put it bluntly, one had stunning tree canopy coverage. The other had nothing. Here's a street off of University Avenue within the Palo Alto city limits. The canopy almost completely covers the entire street. Drive 10 minutes up University Avenue to East Palo Alto. Then turn left onto Cavanaugh Drive and you'll see almost no canopy. In fact, you can see the whole sky. Then I thought, maybe this is me just cherry picking examples. It couldn't possibly be like this for the whole city. So I decided to look at flyover footage. Here's the city of Palo Alto. This neighborhood is littered with green dots everywhere. They line the streets and shade the region. Now, let's go to East Palo Alto. The land is surrounded by a highway. The streets are often wider, exposing more concrete to the sun. Trees are far and few in between. There's clearly a direct correlation between income and tree canopy coverage. So what? Maybe rich people just like the trees for the aesthetics. Turns out, the benefits of trees goes far beyond just looks. One study found shade from trees reduced the temperature of parked cars by 45 degrees. And as if temperature alone wasn't enough, there are important secondary benefits too. Uh, cleaning the water, cleaning the air, managing stormwater, managing rain runoff, um, uh, protecting from uh, UV rays, um, uh, protecting from extreme heat, uh, lowering energy bills, um, uh, it, you know, uh, you have um, raising property values. Um, there is a, a psychological benefit to having trees and green areas. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that it reduces crime, it reduces vandalism, uh, it reduces incidence of asthma. Now we know that tree canopy coverage has vast environmental, health, and social benefits. And we also know that communities like East Palo Alto have far too few trees. This begs the question, why? Well, turns out it can all be boiled down to two words, redlining and funding. Let's start with the first. So a lot of communities uh, throughout the United States experienced segregation and redlining where uh, banks would not invest in uh, communities of color or people of certain races, particularly Black, people were not allowed to live or get houses in particularly white areas. So you created like different sections of towns that were very racially based. That played out also in terms of investment. You know, communities um, of color were often not invested in. Uh, they didn't receive um, you know, services. So a lot of the decisions of the past get grandfathered in. And so that happens a lot with environmental policy, unless you're actually intentionally thinking about the existing inequities and how you're going to address them. This lack of resources over time has deeply widened the gap between white folks and black and brown communities. Now, onto funding. At 20% uh, of the urban canopy is managed by the cities, the public agencies, whereas 80% of that, somewhere in that range, lies within the private sector. We don't have access to that. But whereas the underserved communities or disadvantaged communities, majority of them are renters. These renters are depending on the landlords to somehow provide that kind of a shade or planting trees of maintaining trees. Uh, the funding for these nature-based solutions, especially for the urban forestry, 
is scaled back because there are other priorities at that time for these public agencies. So the, there is a, there's no sustained funding mechanism at present. It's tree planting season right now in Northern California, but activists and lawmakers alike will agree that planting trees alone won't be enough. Most agree that we'll need to start finding more sustainable resources and sources of funding for green investments. And with race and income in our purview, we'll have to start providing resources to the communities that need it the most. This has been Jenna Hawk reporting for the Peninsula Press.